as if the Pac-12 mess could not get any more weird. We now have conflicting reports on potential bidders for the Pac-12 media rights deal. But before we dive into what actually happened with that, let's first hit on everything that's happened since we last spoke about this. Uh, Dennis Dodd over at CBS has been all over the place with it. Uh, first, let's hit on what the Pac-12 is actually selling and why they're having an issue landing a media rights deal. Now, Dodd had an article at CBS Sports titled, What is the Pac-12 Actually Selling? It says, Ratings without USC and UCLA explain leagues struggle to land rights deal. And in that article, he quotes Burke Magnus, uh, who is an ESPN exec on the Marshand and Oran podcast. Uh, and Burke said, The amount of time that we spend thinking about market size, it pales in comparison to the amount of time we think about rivalry. In college sports, it's the rivalries. It's the traditions it's the brands that really aggregate audience. So the issue that the Pac-12 is running into is the ratings for games not involving USC or UCLA. Obviously, Andy Staples had an article at The Athletic back on August 16th of 2021 titled, Why Would the Big Ten Form an Alliance with the ACC and the Pac-12? And he said, it's all about TV's 4 million club, which discussed, of course, the now defunct alliance. Uh, but in that article, he states, I asked a trusted source who has been involved with many television contracts, what audience qualified as meter moving in this ever splinting, uh, excuse me, ever splintering environment. And that source drew the cut line at 4 million. 4 million viewers. Now, you would think that should not be that hard out west, right? Not with, you know, two schools in the Bay Area, big brands like Washington and Oregon. You know, you've got your two-time Pac-12 title winner, Utah, etc., right? Uh, well, Dodd went through all of the data from SportsMediaWatch.com and found the top 20 most viewed rivalry games in the Pac-12 over the last two seasons, not involving USC and UCLA, uh, or really the championship game. Now, there was only one game, one regular season game, that hit 4 million viewers, and that was 2021 Oregon versus Utah. Now, that was a battle of top 10 teams, etc. Uh, outside of that, here were the rest of the top five. You had number two, Washington versus Oregon in 2022. That did 3.63 million. Oregon versus Oregon State this year did 3.56 million. Stanford versus Cal, that's right, Bay Area, 2021, did 2.74 million. And then Oregon versus Washington in 2021 did 2.63 million. Uh, the Pac-12 championship game between Oregon and Utah back in 2021, uh, that season only hit 4.25 million. Now, both of those games between the Ducks and the Utes were blowouts. Uh, but when you look at it compared to the other championship games, the SEC championship hit 15.28 million. The Big Ten, which was another blowout, Michigan won that one 42 to 3 over Iowa, that hit 11.66 million. And the Big 12 championship game between Baylor and Oklahoma State did 8.02 million. Yes, the Big 12 hit nearly double what the Pac-12 did. Granted, one was a blowout, the other was incredibly close, uh, but you get the point. So in the last two seasons, there have only been two Pac-12 games that have hit 4 million viewers, uh, and only four that have hit over 3 million. One of those included the championship game, and of course, the ones that are not involving UCLA and USC. And this is not good, uh, especially considering the SEC had 13 conference matchups in 2021 alone that broke 4 million viewers, and that doesn't include Texas or Oklahoma or conference championship, etc. We don't have to go through the 2022 SEC, or what the Big Ten numbers look like, you get the picture. This is not a super-valued uh, property that we're talking about with the Pac-12 here. Now, on the Marshan and Oran podcast this week, the duo initially rehashed what Andrew Marshan said back in September. He said, The Pac-12 and ESPN are hundreds of millions of dollars apart. They are not even close. He said it's going to be interesting where that goes in terms of negotiations, and will teams jump? Because when you're that far apart, that means something has to happen. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't have information on this, but something just maybe a little conjecture. Do one of the digital players get involved with the Pac-12? He said Apple, for example, loves to buy everything and then sell subscriptions, and they did that with the MLS. So it turns out Andrew Marchand hit the nail on the head as, you know, talk quickly spread this week about Apple TV being a big potential partner with the Pac-12. But there's still a lot to talk about with ESPN and Amazon, right? Like, here's what was said on the podcast. Uh, he said, if the Pac-12 is going to get as much as the Big 12, it's going to have to piece things together, which might not even be possible if they're going to do a deal with ESPN and Amazon. I think Fox is basically out. But if they were to do a deal with ESPN and Amazon, they would have to piece that together. I'm not sure that's possible. There's nothing close at the moment from what I understand. And then they go on to say this. He said, the wild card out there is Apple, and I don't know if it's real or not. You know, if they can be a real thing, do you want to be on Apple? And then they talk for a little bit about the potential for you know, Pac-12 teams to leave the conference, which I'll get into in just a minute, but they continue. Uh, they said, maybe you can get the money from Apple. I don't know about that. I don't really think you want to be on Apple at this point. 
If you're a college football streamer, I don't think uh, I don't think you know, but that's what Apple likes to do. They like to take everything in. So again, I'm not saying that they'll end up on Apple, but that's their last saving grace because Amazon, as we have discussed before, is not really interested in tonnage. Put a pin in that one. Uh, and Amazon doesn't think it needs to pay a premium because they're new in the game and, you know, they're Amazon. They're uh, one of the biggest companies in the world. They continue. Uh, Marshan reported this in the New York Post this week, and I'll go on and quote that as well. It said, with ESPN, Amazon Prime Video, and Fox Sports lukewarm on the league, Apple could end up being the platform for the Pac-12, according to sources. Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyovkov could present Apple as a possibility to his schools soon, according to sources. Whether the universities would be interested in a potential all-streaming deal and whether the terms would end up being good enough to prevent schools from departing to other conferences has yet to be determined. So let's go ahead and dissect this just a little bit, right? He mentioned Amazon not being interested in tonnage. So all of this expansion talk that we've heard over the past week and a half or however long, two weeks, what is the purpose of that? Like, is it just Apple? Did Apple want SMU and San Diego State so there would be more inventory? Possibly. Like, it certainly doesn't sound like it was coming from Amazon, uh, at least according to these reports. Now, I mentioned on the show before that Amazon is really interested in just getting the premier game from the conference every week. Um, I mean, what are you going to do with that? Like, I, I just, I, I don't know if you can put your biggest game on Amazon. Now, before I get to what happened today, let me throw out a hypothetical here. Uh, what if, and just bear with me, I might be insane. What if the corner schools actually leave to join the Big 12? Now, I know Colorado uh, thinks that they're, you know, better academically than the Pac-12. Like, uh, maybe. Or excuse me, not the Pac-12, the, uh, the Big 12. Maybe that's what they... But let's just toss it out there. Arizona, Arizona State, there are people that are eh, interested in what the Big 12 is. Utah, maybe. I mean, they could walk in and be uh, the premier team in the conference immediately. Uh, they talked about schools not wanting to be stuck in a six-team Pac-12. But if you're ESPN, would you hate the idea of having a six-team Pac-12 with Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State, Cal, and Stanford? Like, no, you wouldn't necessarily get a conference championship game out of this. But, but those teams could effectively act as independents. So, so take out. let's take out the idea of a Pac-12 conference. Let's let all six teams bring in their own independent value. And let's say it breaks down this way, okay? Uh, $40 million for Oregon and Washington, and then, I don't know, $25 million for each of the other four. And they all have to sign contracts to agree to play each other over the life of the contract. And then you can have Oregon uh, playing some non-conference games, et cetera. Now, I do understand the Big Ten and the SEC probably going to devalue a little bit of the non-conference schedules that they're going to be uh, be involved in, et cetera. It, this doesn't guarantee a playoff spot, obviously. That's certainly a concern because if you don't have a conference, you can't be guaranteed a playoff spot. But would ESPN be willing to pay, let's see, so 40, 40, and then 425, so uh, 180 bucks a year for those six schools to guarantee that they've got a late night window locked up? Like it's not ideal circumstances necessarily for the schools or even for ESPN, but it is something that could work in the short term before realignment kicks back up in the next few years, right? So th that's just a hype that I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Toss them in the comments there. Uh, so today, Brett McMurphy from the Action Network tweeted out the following. He said, Apple still has not made a formal offer for Pac-12's media right, but Ion Television has emerged as a potential Pac-12 partner, sources told the Action Network. Ion TV is owned by EW Scripps Company, which has 61 local TV stations nationwide and launched Scripps Sports this year. Now, immediately, and I'll admit this, myself included, went to see what kind of programming is on Ion TV. And today, Friday, they have a Hawaii 5 marathon, and the new one, not the old one. And Saturday is All Day Law & Order SVU. After about an hour of that report being out, though, the Athletics Stuart Mandel tweeted this. He said, Ion Script Sports is not involved in the Pac-12's TV negotiations. A source with direct knowledge of the situation tells the Athletic. I don't even know where to go with that. Now, while everyone did make fun of the idea of the Pac-12 being on Ion TV, is it even more sad that they're not even involved in the negotiations like ion is at least on spectrum and and is on youtube tv hulu etc right it's in way more households than the pac-12 network currently like seriously go try and watch the pac-12 network on an actual tv and not some sketchy like illegal stream right this saturday try and watch uh, uh washington state and cal or oregon and oregon state basketball like unless you got one of those new fancy refrigerators that seems to be picking up the network you're not going to be able to find it the carriage deals are insane nobody's picking up the channel and they haven't for years. That, that was the issue with Larry Scott, right? We'll stay away from that. But regardless, it, it's it's impossible to find the game. So at least if you're on Ion TV, people could at least be able to get the channel that you're playing on. Yeah, 
Arizona State AD Ray Anderson went on Arizona Sports with Bickley and Marota and expressed that, yes, the schools are frustrated, but, uh, and this is a quote directly from him, uh, from him, excuse me, that the deal may not be the prog- uh, projections originally contemplated, but will be solid enough financial situation to keep this conference together. Okay. Like, that's coming from an AD. The presidents are the ones that sign off on this stuff, but I, I don't know that he can really, truly say that. Like, I think he's just uh, towing the company line right now. Like, I, I don't believe that from Ray Andrew, but we'll see. Like, the truth of the matter is that nobody knows what is going to happen at this point, and that includes everyone inside the conference and all these sports media people. Everyone is trying to get to the bottom of it, and I think it kind of goes to show that even the conference commissioner doesn't know what they're going to do. Like, would Washington State be willing to take $20 million again? Probably yes. Will Oregon and Washington? Absolutely not. No chance. There's a different level of expectation at different schools inside the conference. Like, it's only going to get muddier until we get something concise from the network or the commissioner like toss in toss in the tweet that the big 12 put out today they were highlighting capacity attendance per home basketball games uh, with these statistics coming from the company stats perform and it's almost become a joke i mean the big 12 is feeling uh, feeling excuse me 75 percent of their home arenas on average the big 10 66.1 percent big east 65.3 percent the acc 63.3 percent the sec 56.5 percent and the pac-12 for basketball is down at 33.4 percent nothing good is coming out for the pac-12 right now like it kind of feels like somebody's trying to sabotage the league like and if they're not it's amazing that this much stuff has come out with no good news like the pac-12 basketball conference tournament uh Starts on March 8th in Las Vegas. I would imagine George Klyovkov is going to have a lot to say when he steps to the podium around that date. But at this point, I wouldn't be surprised by anything. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.